Hello guys, so I've been playing around with Next14 for a while and although the experience has been refreshing, there's some things that still confuse me. One of them is the difference in what server and client components can do. So I'm going to go through things that I didn't really understand and my progress on the whole thing. So one of the first things that I was almost sure about is that client components only run on the client. It's in the name, right? So server components run on the server and client components only run on the client. But that is wrong. So for example, let's create a client component. So let's put it in components client component. So this should just return, let's say a div with a client component text like this. So what marks a component as a client component is adding the use client directive at the top of the file. So let's import this client component in our page here. So client component. So you can see the text of a client component here rendered. So let's try something to check and confirm if this is really rendering only on the client or on the server too. So you can do something as simple as uh, displaying the current time. So because time is equals to a new date to, to local time string. So we can add another h1 here with the current time. So you can see the time displayed here. So what happens if we refresh the page? Notice that a bunch of errors are now being thrown here and one of the most infamous errors of them all. Text content does not much server rendered html so what this means is that this component was rendered on the server and on the client so which means client components are not rendered on the client only they are rendered on both the server and the client but the server components are not rendered on the client they're only rendered on the server so that is the difference so the usefulness of client component is you can add client specific stuff like event listeners which are only supported in a browser environment for example so if we remove this use client directive here you'll see that uh, the error disappears so that was a misleading name to give them i don't know why they call them client components components but i know they had their reasons for it so the second misconception i had on client components is that you can't use server actions on client components so server actions are supposed to replace root handlers or uh, api routes so for example let's add an api root at uh, api say time root dot uh, ts so this uh, let's say this returns the current time so export function get so this is a get root that should return uh, JSON response with the current time so something like this so to be able to call this root handler in our client component we can for example add a function an async function that uh, gets the time from the api so it calls our api root so let's give it the full url so localhost 2000 so it calls our api root and returns the time value from the JSON. So how do we call it from here? So you would, for example, have a state variable holding the current value of time. So let's say, for example, the default value is uh, loading. And then we use the use effect hook to call our function inside here. So get time and then get the result and then set the value of time. And then this is sh should to be called and then this should be called only once so something like that and to mark this as a client component we add the use client directive at the top so if we refresh the page then you can see the loading text first before the result is finally printed on the on the screen so that is how we did this traditionally before next 13 and 14. so how can you update this to use server actions so let's for example move this function into a server action so let's create a server action here so it should be at uh, say actions uh, let's call it uh, get uh, time dot ts so this function should behave the same way as uh, our root handler here so first thing to mark this as a server action you add a use server directive at the top of the file and then we can add our get time function so our get time function here uh, doesn't really call the api but it turns same thing an object with the time key so same thing the root handler is doing here so how can you use this in our client component so let's get rid of this so you don't want to use the uh, hooks to call our feature function so to use a server action here we need to have uh, the action should be as a result of a user action like clicking a button for example so for example you can have a button that uh, should invoke the server action should invoke the server action so you can just add a normal on click handler which is an async function that should call our server action so we can say response equals to await get time which should call our server action and then set the value of time so let's try if this works so let's click 
get time. So you can see that uh, it actually calls our action. So we are able to use a server action inside our client component without having to use um, root handlers. By the way, server actions uh, operate just like root handlers um, in the background. So if you check uh, your network tab, if you click on the button, you see that uh, requests are being sent just like uh, an API route would do. So can you call server actions without having to use uh, event listeners? I don't know. Maybe what you can do is uh, use refs. So for example, you can say um, button ref equals to that and then assign it to the ref. So this should be use ref from uh, react and then maybe do something like um, inside a use effect. Once the component renders, we could say if uh, the ref has a value, we can say click it. I think this can work. Let me see. So let's refresh the page. Yeah, it works, but <laughs> this looks wrong. <laughs> I don't know if uh, this could be the best way to call server actions automatically, but this looks like overkill. So another thing that I thought couldn't work but does work is uh, being able to call a uh, server-only APIs inside client components. So because you have server actions and you can also use root handlers, no one will stop you. Because you have server actions, these will only run on the server. So you can import uh, things that run only on Node, for example. So you can uh, import the FS module, for example, or the path or any node module that wouldn't be available in the browser and this will work without um, breaking this so your server action will still operate normally so another thing that uh, i knew uh, didn't work is being able to include server components inside client components so for example let's say we add a new component here which is a server component so export default uh, function server component so this is a server only component so let's uh, do something that can only work in a server component. So for example, uh, using a, a sync functions and being able to fetch data inside components. So for example, let's call our root handler endpoint. So const uh, response is equals to await fetch our time root handler. So this should be pointing to localhost 3000. That's our host name, right? And then uh, we get the JSON and then uh, let's print the time there. So this is a traditional server component. So let's try something. Let's include it inside our client component here. So we want to test this uh, with the, um, the use effect uh, hook for data fetching. So that you can see, you can be able to visualize uh, the time delay when getting data between the server and the client component. So that should be that, I think. So with the get time function, this is what we created at first. Good. So let's uh, include our server component here. So server component like that. And uh, let's refresh the page. So immediately we'll get uh, this error here. Async await is not supported in client components, only server components. So this error is often caused by access accidentally adding a use client to a module that was originally written for the server. So you cannot technically include server components inside a client component. But what I realized is that you actually can. You just have to change the arrangement of your component tree. So what you need to do is, uh, so you remove the server component from this uh, client component and you add a children slot inside this component. So each React component uh, is able to have other react components as child components via the children uh, property so let's uh, type this to shut typescript up so it's going to receive the children prop so like that so this is a slot so what you do in your parent component that is uh, rendering the child component we, we are now able to add child components to this uh, client component so if we pass our server component as a child to a client component like this, it will render without any problems. So you can see the two have rendered uh, here. There's the client and the server. So if we refresh the page, see that uh, the server is uh, fixed, but the client has to load first to display. So the server component is existing inside the client component without the error that we initially had. So I don't know how to really explain this, but in my mind, I think it's because if you pass uh, the server a component here as a as children prop to this client component it's like the server component is now treated as a parent to this 
home component which is a server component so it's like we have bumped the server component up the component tree but it's still below the client component in the component tree um, so i don't know how to explain that if uh, any of you know how that works i would uh, really appreciate if you can explain it to me but that is how i figured you could be able to include server component inside the client components so there's more things that i learn every day as i use the client and server components but these are the four items that i've um, at least tried to open up my view of how these things work so i hope this was uh, somewhat useful to you guys if you think of uh, something that i've messed up or any ideas that you might have please leave them in the comment section so thank you so much for watching and see you next time